Now let me explain how BSP3 works. Now as I was uh, referring to the uh, other uh, AVIs uh, in Camtasia session on BSP3, let's say this is a room where these dots are, are people uh, and also we could refer as these dots be, being also triangles. So we're currently at depth zero so the actual scene is a voxel and it contains all the triangle in the scene. If I were to trace a ray inside that volume I would have basically to test all these 50 or so dots to see if the actual ray did hit these objects or elements. Um, so what we really want to do is optimize this such that we want to lower the number of triangle being tested for a given ray in the scene. So we're going to proceed to split the scene into uh, finer voxels in order to have uh, uh, an optimized uh, testing session. So we are currently at depth level zero. I'm going to slice up the scene in a, in a given axis uh, to be able to have an even number of, of triangles on both sides. So I'm going to split right here the actual volume such that I have pretty much 25 and 25 on both sides. The actual splitting actually is is not occurring uh, it's not always aligned in X Y or Z but it could be also being split it and into a very custom axis here so it is not it is not a uh, it is not being aligned with with X Y Z axis but I'm since I'll be using a 2d example I'll be aligning the splitting onto uh, to X Y axis for uh, sake of simplicity so now I've split the scene into two voxels. So this is voxel 1 and voxel uh, 2 and the first voxel here was voxel 0. So now voxel 0 contains voxel 1 and voxel 2. Uh, now uh, for each of these voxels I need to test, okay, there, is, there in, is there too many triangles and contains in each of the and each of the voxels. Then there's 25 and 25. In this case, I guess, let's say the user has put, for example, a size uh, of 10. Then obviously 25 is way too much. So we have to again split up these these voxels to be able to have a, a even a number of voxels. So let's say, for example, we do have about 10, 12, 13 voxels here in each of these voxels. Again, because the size defined by the user is 10, there's the, the each of these voxels contains way too many triangles. Again, these these lines here are uh, what we call moving triangles or triangle that will create motion blur because they they travel over time during the actual frame being rendered. This is pretty much t0 and up to shutter time. So this voxel has to remember that uh, this triangle will travel from about let's say. 30% of the shutter time up to 100%. So this this uh, voxel has to remember that. Same thing for this one and same thing for this one. This one here has to remember that four of these moving triangles are passing through the uh, this voxel some some somewhere in time. Either starting uh, their their course uh, in the voxel or just passing through. So uh, again, there's uh, way too many triangles contained in each of these voxels, so we need to split it again. So now we have pretty much something like five to six to seven uh, uh, triangle per voxel. We've pretty much reached the actual criteria criterion set by the user. If I were to trace a ray inside that that scene, then obviously the ray would only go through. Uh, four of these voxels. So I've basically just limit the number of triangle being tested by by half because these these boxes here will never get tested because the, the rate does never goes through. So there's always instead of to opt, in order to optimize the actual testing, it will it will test if if this actual it does cross a box or a voxel. And it, if it does, it will test all the triangles in it. So it gets here tests uh, the actual triangle, see, sees that no triangle has been hit, and then it trades to the next box. Tests all these triangle here, see, sees that nothing has been you know, hit or intersect with, then it goes to the next box. Again, this one, nothing intersects with the ray, 
and then finally the last one we would uh, actually hit the triangle and then call the material on this this particular material right here so that's really uh, the way BSP tree works let's say for example I've had set even though the size would have been 10 and I would have set uh, the actual depth to 1 then it would pretty much has, has stopped recursion or scene splitting right there because prior depth has a higher priority than size so let's go back here this is pretty much also the actual uh, BSP tree represented into a tree uh, graphic so that's why we call them leaf node because if you do reverse this graphic uh, upside down you'll see that this is basically the trunk and this is uh, branch and sub branch and eventually this these are our leaves and those leaves contains triangle the red dots are basically the same triangle moving from box to box so this is only to to show that a a, uh, a given voxel will uh, will contain uh, you know triangle that are moving it is possible that if you do stop recursion or the depth uh, too soon it is possible that a voxel may contain way too many triangles it, this is this is normal but not expected well this is normal but this is not what you really want to do It's that you have to obviously maximize the number of triangle inside Jeets box by lowering the number of triangles so as the 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 rate goes through each of the boxes it tests less and less triangle the thing is is you have to find and this is through BSP tree statistics uh, delivered by mental rates after the rendering is being done is is to find out a good balance between the number of boxes you're going to test and number of triangles the idea is that you have for a given ray path you have to lower the number of of triangle being tested so it is possible that you may have uh well the optimal perfect you know uh thing you could do is is you break up in a so tiny uh BSP tree structure so tiny that each voxel would contain one triangle which is really kind of of the optimal uh thing so as the, it traces through then obviously it will only test one triangle but obviously that requires a lot of memory and uh uh to be able to record this BSP tree structure and memory so this is not practical so we have to find a balance between the number of triangle per voxel and number of voxel being passed through by the ray and the statistics give you that information